All right, let's now revisit uh, one of our top stories uh, this hour, and that is uh, the lecturer's strike. Uh, the third uh, this year, of course, and uh, they're seeking 5.2 billion shillings in arrears from the government. Joining me in studio now is Muga Rigara. He's the chairperson of uh, Uasu Jaquat chapter. Thank you very much for joining us here on KTN News Desk. Just a few months ago, lecturers uh, from public universities went, went on strike, um, uh, and after a while, the government uh, remitted about 10 billion shillings yes. to their accounts. What happened between then and now that we are going into another strike, the third one this year? Yeah, that is true. There was a strike in March, mm -hmm. between January and March this year, and lecturers were on strike for purposes of negotiation the 2013-2017 CBA. The government finally um, released 10 billion in, in June and August in two tranches. One was 4.75 billion and the other one was 5.25 billion. The, uh, the total was supposed to take care of arrears. This CBA it was supposed to have been signed and negotiated by June, June, by June, June 30th, 2013. But because it was negotiated much later, so the government was paying arrears with the 10 billion. Mm -hmm. After you pay arrears of a CBA, the CBA normally has something it adds on the pay slip. And what it adds on the pay slip is what we have not earned between July and now. So a CBA have a lifetime, and after it expires, it's supposed to have enhanced your pay slip to some extent. The CBA expired on June 30th, 2017, mm -hmm. but it had, had an enhancement on the pay, uh, an effect on the pay slip, and that is what we have not received. So it uh, means after the government did this 10 billion for to pay arrears, mm -hmm. it did not enhance capitation for purposes of enhancing the pay slip from July 2017 onwards, and that is what we are now asking. For how long haven't you received um, um, this, of course, top money from the CBA? After, yes, from what the happened after that is June, and we received the areas in good time, the government, the, the many about six universities started paying an enhanced pay slip from July. Like Jaiku had paid, Karatina University paid, uh, jo Jaramogio Gaudiga University paid, Mashakos paid, Shuka paid, but after... After uh, paying the July salary, I, th I hear there was a vice chancellor's committee that castigated the vice chancellors who have started paying the enhanced pay slip, and mm -hmm. two universities retracted. That is, JK what retracted, so others they didn't pay the, the enhanced pay slip, and Karatina University. Mm -hmm. But Jiramogi Ogiga Odiga, Machakos, and Shuka University are paying. So it means there is money somewhere that is supposed to be enhancing our pay slip. But it has been withheld. We are not sure whether it is withheld by the University Council, mm -hmm. by the Minister of Education, or by Treasury. Mm -hmm. And so, what we do, we uh, we ask, we don't need, we also want to say that we don't want to be mistaken. Like we are in another political uh, coalition mm -hmm. where we are supporting a certain order of a political coalition. Mm -hmm. No, we are we are what we are doing is in line with. The, Constitution of yeah. Kenya 2010, Article 37, mm -hmm. where we have right to go on strike mm -hmm. or petition or, uh, and present a, or picket mm -hmm. and present a petition to, to the government. Since uh, the strike was called um, about two days ago yes. at, at, at 2 p.m., we've had uh, various press briefings from various uh, chapters. Yes. Um, the other day, we also had a briefing from uh, lecturers in multimedia university. Today, yes. we had one from Jay Quart. Yes. And uh, seemingly, there is blame on the government. There is blame on the very institutions or the university council as yes. well. Today, we've also had uh, the chairman blame the SRC. Yes. Where do your wars emanate from exactly, from all these uh, parties being blamed? Okay, in the actual sense, the, the universities are autonomous in nature. They have an employer who employs the specific staff in specific universities. Mm -hmm. That is why our setup as UASU is not the same as TSE, mm -hmm. as, as NAT. Yes. NAT has only one employer. All teachers in the country at the NAT only have an employer. All lecturers in all universities have segmented employers mm -hmm. as many as the universities are. So now that we have that one universities as we are talking, so we have that one employers in the universities. Mm -hmm. Each group, each university staff strike against their employer, mm -hmm. who is the council. Mm -hmm. But now these councils have a, a, a legal body called IPUCCF, yeah. Interpublic Councils Consultative Forum. 
the, that forum is, is now a forum of all employers who are all the university councils. And that forum reports directly to the ministry. So, but the union brings us together, yes. which is uh, the purposes of the union. Mm -hmm. Now, when we are on strike, it is the councils who are supposed to respond to us mm -hmm. by paying us what we are, because we mm -hmm. are directly employed by the councils. Mm -hmm. But the councils and get money from the Minister of yes. Education, which gets money from Exchequer. Mm -hmm. So by extension, the government has a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I want you to speak uh, from a lecturer's perspective yes. uh, from this particular strike. This is a third one in a year. Yes. We're just about uh, 55 days to the end of the year. Yes. How would you describe um, uh, the quality of education, even with the disruptions that has been there in universities as a lecturer? I must say the government has a responsibility to stabilize higher education sector. And one of the ways of stabilizing an education sector is actually enumerating the service providers. The service providers in the higher education sector are lecturers. They are the main stakeholders because it is only lecturers where they don't go to class, everything else can stop. So what I want to say is that uh, we, it is not our wish to be on strike. But it is our wish to be enumerated according to the CBA. Many people are mistaking our CBA with the nurses and all others. The CBA for nurses had a problem because it was not negotiated, it was not signed, it was not uh, registered in court. That's why it took a delay. It also had a problem because the nurses are employed directly by county government because it has devolved function. Yeah. So the, the national government could not intervene directly. But higher education has not been devolved. And so as we get our enumeration directly from the government. So it is, it is our plea that if it is possible, the government stabilizes the higher education sector. Now the, the, the primary education is free. High school education is going to be free from January. We need also them to come to high school, to mm -hmm. university, in a stable environment. Even if they make it free or whatever, mm -hmm. but they have to compensate the lecture. So then how will you this time around ensure that um, you're not duped into a deal, so to speak, uh, quote unquote, because mm -hmm. you say last time 10 billion shillings was yes. uh, remunerated to your accounts yes. and then it was over. Yes. No much money was sent. Yes. Um, how do you avoid this happening uh, this time round uh, that money will be sent, then you will go back to work and then... They will stop and then you'll go back to the streets so that now that we are establishing a pattern here. Yes, we are in we are we have very much, we have a very good structure that is trying to talk with the Ministry of Education. Because remember, Kisa, CBAs are supposed to be negotiated before they are they become effective. Yes. Like now we have a CBA pending, CBA 2017, 2021. Mm -hmm. It is supposed to have become effective in July. So in the actual sense, we have two CBAs that are not one is Completely si negotiated, signed, registered, that uh, this is now pending implementation. Mm -hmm. Now, the other one is not negotiated. What we would like the government to do is actually to implement this 2013 2017 in full so that we can be able to negotiate the 2017 2021 and, and have it paid. Now, SRC is coming in because of this purpose. Mm -hmm. SRC is, was supposed to have harmonized all salaries in all public sector, all people who get their money from the exchequer. SRC has harmonized salary for civil servants, for teachers, for most government ministries, except education, uh, you higher education, higher education. sector. And if, so that's why we have a problem in all universities because what they did, uh, SRC came and carried an, a job evaluation exercise that they did not involve the employee. And the international standards on job evaluation require that you agree on the tool between the evaluator and the one being evaluated. Mm -hmm. We just got questionnaires which were not even focusing on the core uh, duties of a lecturer. Mm -hmm. The core duty of a lecturer is teaching, examination, and the training. Uh, teaching, research, and the training. That was not captured in the questionnaire. So that evaluation delayed. Mm -hmm. That evaluation was also supposed to guide the 2017-2021 CBA. Mm -hmm. But even before we come there, we have a CBA that has not been implemented. And so for this, this take is as far as 2013-2017 CBA, mm -hmm. implementation is concerned. concerned. So does that mean that all you seek currently in uh, the 2013-2017 CBA is just 5.2 billion shillings? Okay, where 5.2 billion coming, is mm -hmm. coming in 
madam, is because we, we, we are aware the, the Parliament has had dated 11th June for supplementary budget mm -hmm. that was supposed to, to also uh, help IBC conduct the repeat elections, yes. had 5.2 billion for higher education mm -hmm. sector. Those 5.2 billion, we don't know. You know, before the budget goes to parliament for yes. approval, it emanates from minister to the treasury. Mm -hmm. So it means treasury knows where that money is coming mm -hmm. from. It went to parliament, it was approved. We have those hands-ups. Mm -hmm. Now, it is the, 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 I think the quagma is between the treasury so the, there's money and the hanging education. somewhere there's money meant hanging for somewhere lectures. Somewhere yes. Which we are not getting. We don't know whether this money is what some vice chancellors are using to pay. And, uh, you know, we had a case... In 2010, 2013, CBA, we got 7.8 billion, but 3.9 billion disappeared mm -hmm. somewhere between the Ministry of Education and the and university mm -hmm. managers. And it was later recovered after a strike. Mm -hmm. So we also don't know whether this money, this money which was in the hazard, is also the money we are supposed to be compensated mm -hmm. with. Okay. That, this, okay. this third strike, uh, depending on how long it will take, um, yes. uh, from your perspective as a lecturer, yes. how great an effect will it have on students? Uh, specifically, being India, we have those that are expected to be graduating end yes. of this year. How much of an effect will it have? Yeah, it might have an adverse effect on our students, and we have others with them. About 600 students, 600,000 students are going to be affected by this strike. Mm -hmm. We are urging the government to act swiftly. Kisa, people have been saying that we are going on strike when there is election nearing, president is still elect, not, but what we are saying, if the president who is elect is not, was not the incumbent, we would have some grace to say, he, we need to let him sit in the office. But now, we, he was the incumbent right from even June 2016 when the CBA was not being mm -hmm. implemented. He is now the president-elect. The government institutions continue to be in place, and our constitution is very careful. It allows ministers to continue in office, the institutions. We also say that government is not a person. Mm -hmm. It is an institution mm -hmm. that is, remains intact, mm -hmm. even when there is electioneering and everything else. Mm -hmm. And the processes... No more, thi no, more, uh, 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 more, no more activities of the government are supposed to continue as, mm -hmm. as, as normal. And therefore, that's why we demand that this government should respond to our request. Is this industrial action the last resort for lecturers in public universities? Have you exhausted all avenues in terms of consultation with the government and your employer? Yes, what we did. We actually had proposed to go on strike by uh, immediately in August. But when the presidential elections were annulled, we had to, 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 to extend our strike so that we, we don't combine our strike with an electioneering period. So if you notice, we gave our 21 days notice sometimes in, in September, which was coinciding with, the end, with, with after 17th October. Mm -hmm. But when we had already issued our, 20, our 21 day notice in, in September, mm -hmm. It, uh, the, the elections were again postponed to 26. So our actually our mm -hmm. notice for strike expired, uh, expired on 25th October, mm -hmm. when the elections were the following day. We extended our notice by one week to make sure that the elections are held and the country stabilizes. Mm -hmm. So we are we have a, a, a lot that cares about the stability of the country. Yeah. That's why our notice ended on that first October 2017, so that we can be able to enter into a strike where the country is relatively stable. Mm -hmm. And we believe that this is a, a, the right time for us. When um, in that particular press briefing uh, from uh, Jaquat, we saw the chairperson yes. of OASU, Constantine Wesong, um, uh, blame the SRC, saying that it is writing letters to the university councils asking them to negotiate with lecturers their non financial items. For the sake of our viewers, I want you to break down that for us. Okay. The, the collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm. it has two. Uh, in the universities has two components. As I told you, we have different employers. So work, well, in terms of, well, in terms of work, working conditions, mm -hmm. are negotiated, which are non-monetary, mm -hmm. largely non-monetary, are negotiated by the, the, the specific council with the employees of that university. Yeah. The only common, uh, common uh, item in, in our CBA is salary and the house allowance. Mm -hmm. Salary and house allowance, 
we mandated the National Office of the University's Academic Staff Union to negotiate that so that they can negotiate with this body called IPUCCF. So they negotiate the two, the two items because they are common to all of us. But the other items which are non-monetary in nature, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the medical scheme, yeah. we have uh, terms of uh, the conditions of uh, working environment, mm -hmm. We have uh, things like uh, um, leave, medical leave, academic leave, and other leaves, nature of leaves. All those we negotiate with the employer because you, you notice they must be specific to certain. Like there are people who want hardship allowance, hardship allowance mm -hmm. the others who want uh, commuter allowance, the others who want book allowances and all that. Those ones you negotiate directly with the employer. Mm -hmm. And the employer, some of them have monetary uh, aspect and the employer will pay according to their capacity mm -hmm. to, to fund those from internally generated funds. Mm -hmm. But house allowance and salaries has to be negotiated at national level. Mm -hmm. So why we, are, we have a problem with SRC is SRC is giving instructions that we negotiate those terms and the conditions of environment based on that evaluation which they did, which they did not consult us. And we went to court, we was always in court, stopping at the hazard court injunction, stopping SRC from implementing that evaluation which they did without consulting the union. And that's why we have a problem with them communicating direct to the employer for us to negotiate based on an evaluation that mm -hmm. we did not participate. Is a strike in all the 31 public universities in the country? Okay, we have exempted the three universities that are already paying. Yes. Because by all standards, if a vice chancellor has found it wise to pay to pay their lecturers, the enhanced salary, it's also good to give that vice chancellor mm -hmm. goodwill. But in essence, mm -hmm. those universities are in solidarity mm -hmm. with us. Okay. They support the strike fully, mm -hmm. but they have continued to teach so that we All also right. give any other vice chancellor who feels that they can start paying okay. the enhanced salary, we allow them All right, to I want us to come back to this conversation yes. shortly so that we know which are these three universities that are not on strike. But quickly, let's move to Mombasa, where Governor Ali Hassan Joho is currently addressing members of the press, um, seemingly officially launching the Mombasa uh, 